Welcome to January's vlog. We're all ready to go. It's a really busy month, even though it's January, we're, it's all happening. I've got so many trips and plans and journeys and cool things that have all been in a pipeline that are all happening this month already. I don't know whether we'll get to cram it all into January's vlog, but it will certainly make February's even better. The main man is back. We've got Russell back in the driving seat. Really pleased about that. And he's back to work and I can get on with my projects and we can get this ball rolling and we can hit you with some good vlogs this year. It's an old woman born, born in a young man's body. <laughs> Just an old moany old with, with all, you know. I, don't know, I, think I, I think guys like get older, I'm not so moaning. No, yeah, I think you're all right. I think I've like, I used to moan at everything. Playing about everything. Okay, well, enjoy this month's vlog. Right, come on. Well, just because you've got to run over doesn't mean you can't get your hair cut. Chris, good morning, Bunny. Nice one. Nice wood, Chris. So I finished printing, probably next cutting. And sides. Right, okay. Well, normally, and the next process would have been to square edge the board so it was a nice floor board for the customers. But the timber this has come off of has such a wonderful, original, natural edge that if you even see here, if you look at that natural, this is cedar. If you see that natural edge, what a lovely um, shelf unit or bookcase it could be made with all that oxidised, grained, textured edge. So, traditionally we would um, square edge all these boards and set it as a floorboard. But it would come quite simple and just standard. Whereas, to me there's great value in that edge. And I don't want to compromise the board. So, before I say the next steps, what we will do, I'm just going to say what we won't do. We, we're not going to cut them edges off, okay? okay? And that's lovely flooring, and that's what we're all about, but I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that edge. Right, Chris, let's have a look here. So, Chris, I don't know if you remember this wood. Yeah. I remember when you very first started with me, about five years ago, six years ago, these railway boards, I dealt in tens of thousands of them. This is a few little packs that have sat around for a long time, because I kept some back for my own projects. But, let's just get them on the market, let's get them sold. But, Chris has got very good English now, but when he first came to the business, his English was very small. And I have very great memories, and I never forget teaching Chris to pick the wood out and I would put up Pitch pine. Pitch pine. Oak. Oak. Mahogany. Mahogany. Pitch pine, mahogany, oak. And it'll be pitch pine, mahogany, oak. And every time I'll see the wood, pitch pine, which one? Mahogany, oak, pitch pine. And I'll, for weeks I'll walk past wood and I'll go, what is this? And he'll go, pitch pine. And I'll go, no, it's oak. <laughs> Just bitch my mahogany out.
So my old mate Tommy I went to school with, since I knew him in nursery, he loves cars, <laughs> he still loves cars. Yeah. Got something wrong with him. Yeah, we never get old, do we? <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It's nice that people stick with passion, yeah. and um, you know they ain't much you don't know about a lot of vehicles. You know what I mean? He loves. Uh, you got a classic car, haven't you? Got yeah. a Mazda. Yeah, a Monza MX-5 Monza. It's racing green. What do you think about this car, then? I love it. Okay. You don't see many from here. Uh, there ain't one on the market no. you can buy. You can buy the hard tops, mm. and they're rare as hell. Yeah. To find this soft top version original, yeah. and if you do. Mm which you can't at the minute, but this is a right-hand drive, yeah. low miles, not abused, It's and it's got uh, four owners. Oh. The stuff you use, you use some premium wax. Yeah. What was the wax you use? Mitchell and King wax, blended for that. The, the, guy in, the guy in Scotland blends his own wax. I won't bore you with it, I'm going forever and I will. He blends his own wax, right? And you tell him a paint colour, paint code, or the type of car it is, how old it is, and he'll blend it, make it specifically for, for you. Oh, excellent. And uh, I've got the, the type of paint that is, it's a flat, and that's the, that's the type of temperature outside, and that's the wax that's gone on it. Look at look here, the paint job was excellent anyway, yeah, but yeah. look, look, it's a nice paint job, isn't it? Brilliant paint job. Brilliant paint job. Look at that. It's such a beautiful car, with a lovely finish, and... Um, I mean, these plastics, they didn't look as good as this at all. And Tommy's brought them up really nice. Take it easy. Brilliant. Um, good to see you. Good to see you. That's, um, that's a nice thing to start the year off. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. Nice pleasure yeah. to have a fresh, yeah. clean car. Yeah. You know, that's clean it. the decks. Clean car's a happy car. Yeah, look at that. And the canvas looks lovely. But it is a summer vehicle, so I'll get it sheeted up there. Yeah. And... Um, it's got some journeys and trips to do this year. Just had a massive uh, load of stone come in off a project we were clearing out over Christmas. We was over there in the frost. We was basically reclaiming stone work that had been collected by a hoarder and in his garden all over the place. And real good premium items, but mixed and this stuff that we have to collate, process work and turn into products that are easy for you to buy. Oh here we go, we've got a stone here. Wow, a bit of a turn. Plimps. Oh god, this is giving me a date looking at it already. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stone market, John Hobson, he's done a, a number detail and he's rich stonemason. So he's showing off his um, his credentials there. What we could do, we could look him up and, and that will date the period of the stone. Wow, this is a big puzzle. That's a big puzzle, this eh? Big, big, puzzle. We've got enough puzzles already. Another six poly, no, two, four, six, another five poly coming. It's a bit of window four. there. Four poly more coming. Open. Why do I do it to myself? <laughs> Why? I've got enough of these projects already in it. Existing. Just got back from Norwich, had my hair cut, went into little barbers, and uh, this Iraqi man, he cuts my hair and he's like, oh, yeah, no, my friend, you don't look like Jesus no more. Uh, no, yeah, you still look like Jesus. <laughs> I suspect it's been a year since I had my hair cut. So, I guess I feel a little bit younger. The thing was, right, this whole side up here, I've got loads of grey hair come through. And I think 2022 did that to me. That's where they, they all just appeared last year. And last year was a hard year. Right, I'm now back 
in the office after filming with Dan about the stones and I've had a little research and I've found out who John Hobson was. So John Hobson, the, the carved, engraved bit of stone that Dan was reading out one to nine, it turns out he was from Stone Market and he was a stonemason in the 1800s, kind of early 1800s. Um, and we found his daughter was Lucy Pleasance Hobson Simpson and she married Edward Simpson and Edward worked with John um, and kind of learnt all of his skills so he actually worked with his father-in-law and then set up his own company so we have actually found one of Lucy's great-great-grandchildren I think it's great-great and um, hopefully we'll get in contact with them and see if they've got any pictures or any more information but it's just nice to kind of know who John Hobson was, who his relatives were, and it's nice that he carried down, uh, carried his craft over to his his son-in-law, and it's just nice to kind of find that out and have a little bit of an ending to the story. So now off on a little adventure today, I'm going to pick some of my paintings up, just a few that's been in conservation, had some special works done, and they're quite select pieces, really good stories. Going to do a bit of studying whilst on site, uh, got my computer with me, got to go over a few important matters at hand, all to do with this big thing I've got going on, this big, this big discovery. So it's going to be a good day for me today, and I'm running late, so I'll best get moving. Right. See you later. So I was just editing what we have so far, and I thought, I haven't shown you guys our new little office. So, me and Paul, We've uh, moved downstairs with a red bus just behind me. Um, so Russell's sitting upstairs, got his important conversations and important yard manager stuff. And um, we thought we'd come in the warm um, and set up a new little workstation. So the plan is to get a nice kind of glazed door there, to kind of get a bit shut off and um, have like a, a little huddle, like a little hub for media. Um, so we've got my desk there with the vlog being edited on that. I've got Paul usually sits there. But he's working from home today and we've got like a little charging station set up over there. We've got a monitor over there for like vlog viewing. It's perfect. Depending when the door is done, depends when Russell wants to do it. So, hopefully next month's vlog, Russell. Done next month, yeah? Before next month, yeah. He said before next month, so it will be in next month's vlog. So, um, fingers crossed, and she gets done. Here we are in my um, small private little space that has a few um, tasty pieces of history. And this is where my stone carving is 19th century merchant ship. What I want to tell you about it is, I want to show you the scale of it compared to me. You can see that it's it's a big deal, it's a nice thing. But this black paint on it has come on at a later date. And just the end of a cotton bud, I'll just use this little bit of wood and I'll show you if you, this the original gilding is under there and you can, it, the top paint just comes straight off. And, and you, that gilding is just there, hidden away. And then even if we do it, look here. Look at that original gilding there. 24 karat gold. It actually appears as if, holy, holy? 
most of the coverage was gilded. All of this detail gilded, all of it. You can see the scabbard is gilded as well as the handle. So it's just been a whole lot of gold. And he had so much gold, that means a little bit more. Let's talk about what's going on. We've got this shield, which underneath the paint is gilded. We've got this scabbard and we've got cannons to show that it's military. We've got fruit. It would have been maybe transporting a merchant transporting luxury exotic fruit goods whilst armed. It's got a crown. Um, looks like it would have been a British sovereign ship. I had this stern carving valued by the number one historian on ships figurehead carvings and he valued it at 20,000 plus. It's so unique. He can't believe I managed to find it. And where did I find it? I found it at an antique fair. And even the dealer said to me, oh, if you want to bring it back, I'll give you your money back for it. And I was like, no, I'm happy with what I've bought. When I get to buy some of these treasures that I buy, I'm like, this is a bit strange. Fantastic antique. Yes, fair price. I guess I'll be going now. And I'm like, why has nobody else bought this? Um, on the same day, I bought two of my Van Dyke copies, massive. Um, they were very cheap, and they were incredible, no one else bought them. And, yeah, I just don't know, it's like a, it's like my own little tunnel sometimes when I find things. Like, why is, could nobody else see these objects? Um, that's how it goes, but... You can't see nothing else in it, okay? It's private. It's a freezing cold early Monday morning. We've got all the layers on. We've got some exciting stock in the fire room. Something that's been on our, the top of our containers for a while, at, at the entrance, we've got a massive drop tank, um, a military drop tank. Um, it's absolutely massive, probably about three meters long, but I'm not very good at estimating, so it's big. So off to the fire room now. Paul's in there already, kind of helping set some things up and it's going to be a bit of a challenge to shoot it, but it's a really, really cool item. So, I'll cut to a video now of it going in. Um, it's quite a fun little reel that we've posted on Instagram and TikTok, so um, cut to that now. Five, four, three, two, one. This is International Rescue. This is International Rescue. This is International what? Rescue. What? Anything can happen at the next half hour. Keep this frequency clear. What? What? Oh, oh. This is probably one of the biggest items we can fit in our photo studio. We're going to have to do some photoshopping on the ends to try and uh, make the wall look bigger. But I'll pass it up to, to Paul and he can see a bird's eye view with him. Right, here you go Paul. So this is, uh, this is up on the old hayloft. So we're up in the, the rafters of our thatched barn up here. And it's handy to get up this high, ollie for scale. This is, uh, we can't get it straight on it just has to go on an angle because it's so wide, but um, we've had big items in here before, but this is probably about as big as we can, as we can fit in. Um, so yeah, we come up here to get the, the wide shot and then Ollie will grab some details of some of the nice, uh, the nice military details and the, the badgings and things. So as Ollie mentioned, this is a drop tank. It's from a, uh, a tornado, I think. They came out of a... A Norfolk RAF base 
We've got a few other tornado bits that have been listed in the past. So these are pylons that go under the wings to hold various uh, various parts. So um, we've got the larger ones, which I think are the inboard pylons, and the small ones are the outboard pylons. We've sold a load of these in the past. Um, I think people have had them for desks or just interesting. Um, Interesting bits of military reclaim. What was your estimate on length, Tommy? I said three meters. I think it's more than that. What is it? Six and a half. I did say I was bad. I mean, I got half. things that have just happened. As you know, I went off to the art studio uh, a couple of days ago, picked up some pictures of mine, brought them back, did some other discussions, all sorts of things. But it's two days later now, and last night I decided to turn the back of my Harry Gill painting over and have a little clean on the frame. I did a little test clean and it turns out the timber is not just dirty. I thought I'd see clean wood. It's got a thin coat of a tempera paint, which was a funny colour. Like I'm colour blind, it was like an orangey mustard colour. But it started breaking down very easily with water. So I was using some cotton buds here, as you see. And these baby wet wipes which are 99% water but you know they're good for a baby's skin and they a little bit on here it breaks down the paint really easily so um, so I did that just as a little relaxing thing just a little just before I was going to bed last night about half past 11 I thought I'd just have a little tickle there and see what's going on and then I revealed a letter I a big letter I and this was all covered. And um, let's just jump to last night's footage. I tried to record loads of bits and pictures, but I was so excited. Jump back to that now of the footage off my phone, and then we'll come back here in a minute. Well, it's nearly 12 o'clock and I may have just started to uncover a big large name under my 16th century frame of Antoinette. In the corner I started, out of any of the corners, I think I'm going to have to Get on the tabletop man on the floor. My legs are aching. I have to keep going. Or should I wait to see the studio? Should I wait to see the studio or should I just keep going? It's only water, so I'm, I'm uncovering it. What if it says all That'd be good. It'd be amazing.
So what do you think of that then? It's the next day. I'm sort of in my rags, just sitting indoors, and I'm focusing on my picture. Um, whilst the timber's dry, it's got a very flat look. But what I discovered as I went to bed was um, Griffoni is what this says. And Griffoni was the heir to Aldrovandi's estate. This name is not broken down by the um, where the frame was reduced. Where it was reduced here, it continues. So it shows you that the frame was reduced and then it was wrote Griffoni. So it wasn't reduced, which means it wasn't painted over after Griffoni's possession. And Griffoni only had it after Aldrovandi. So it means Griffoni, the nephew of Aldrovandi, was the one who instigated the cover-up and the reduction. This was not what I planned to speak about with what I brought back from the studio. I had a fantastic painting that I was going to tell you about that's still completely yet to reveal itself. We're going to have a look at it now just to, um, just to give me a break away from this for a second. This is my St Paul, which on first look appears Spanish looking. But then I've come back to the idea that there's no reason it couldn't be Italian or Bolognese. They all did things like this. It's got that Caravaggio sort of shading, sheer casuro. It would have been a large scale painting that would have been looked at high up, maybe in the church, as like an altarpiece. The quality is fantastic in the face, the hair, the, everything, the, the shade in the light. But as you come down to the hand, the hand's, the hand's all right, but this, this is the bottom of the sword, but the hand on here just goes down to nothingness really and it's not that good. Sometimes you had the master do the face and then the studio and the assistants do the rest. And whether this being as large scale and at a distance, the focus on the hand wouldn't have been too great and with the light and the shading and it's dark it wouldn't have been noticed. But his sort of direct look of St Paul with his sword. I would like to tell you something a little bit more about this frame which has yet to be um, said out loud to the world or anybody which I find quite certain is if you know that the hairy girl was the picture as it stands is this proportion and this way but originally the hairy girl was a larger picture well at the moment what I can say is, this is the side, and this is the side, upright, but they're complete. And I believe that these sides were originally the top and bottom, when that was, because it's been reduced, okay? This has been reduced, and that end has been reduced, but this, this side would have been the top. Three reasons. This side and this side continuous has never been reduced, like the bottom side, they've been reduced. Okay, that's one. It's got, on this side, it's got this bracket where this would have held as if this was the top. And then, if you look on the gilding, on the top and the bottom, you can see runs that go this way down, which show the painting in its original um, proportion. So, um... It's it's so interesting. It's so interesting to learn. It's to understand that story. All these little things that have happened four hundred years ago. I'm very much satisfied if I don't find nothing else. But I wouldn't say no if uh, something else pops out to show me what's going on.
only end of the month now, and I, I hear that the uh, second load of stones come in. So let's go and have a look at that. Oh, it looks like some chimneys. What do you think of this puzzle, Russell? Well, we did even have one, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we <laughs> lost without. It's like the one we started six years ago. It's moved around more times than it has been in situ, I think. Yeah. Like this is this is uh, ECC. What's that? Roman numerals. E. What's E? Tell me. I don't know. I'm gonna be stung. Look stupid. Um, e is for elephant. Uh, e, e, elephant. C is for cat. 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 I feel like a two year old trying to work it out. So if you thinking of coming to the end of your life and you've had enough but you can't quite push yourself there buy <laughs> this package of stone and come uh, down and um, take on this project and that'll be done oh, oh lifting oh, yeah. too, too much lifting that is okay well there you go that's this month's vlog you can see we've got some stuff coming in already, things going on. It's January only, and it's all starting to happen again. All right, so um, thanks for who have subscribed. Thank you for who will subscribe. So what I'm about to catch up with Russell in the office is that I'm gonna to go to Glasgow in a few days, and I've got a big route across UK. I've got to drop a human skeleton off. I've got to pick a sculpture up, and um, so we'll run through that plan there and that'll all be next month's vlog so stay tuned we'll see you next month enjoy this vlog see you later and uh yeah did you haircut ollie yeah you yeah, followed yeah. suit yeah yeah had a cut yesterday don't look at mine <laughs> <laughs> i mean all day russ has not said anything oh. you've come in you've noticed it straight away yeah I know these things, you see. No, I don't, yeah, but I don't make a thing of it. I don't want to draw attention to myself. Even picked you up this morning, Russell. Didn't say a thing. Yeah, because that was in the morning, I sleep. Pitch black, black finished work. five o'clock, over. We're still in the winter. But, lovely. lovely. Oh, it's nice to hear that uh, Russell and Gabby are speaking. That's nice. Um, can we get tropical plants in here because it seems to be a moist zone, like condensation? Can we? Is it Amazon rainforest up here? No. What are them air plants? Can we get them in here? We could put more in the vents. I've got, I've got ten of them. That'd be good. Look, that'd go in there nicely. No. And a parrot. No. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Russell, you're on camera, so this is a crucial document in front of you that you should not read out loud.